Marie. They took separate cars. She was glad to go alone. He drove like a maniac, working the steering wheel like a child playing a video arcade game. She could see his silver car up ahead, weaving between the traffic, rounding imaginary red cones. She heard his voice clearly, making great time, said about when her motion sickness would set in. So he got to places faster, big deal. He never enjoyed the journey. He was always thinking toward another place and time and not living the moment they were in, forever playing catch up, living in haste. No wonder he had no idea of what bothered her, never did. She smiled, remembering the distinct pleasure it had given her to see that he hadn't seen divorce in their immediate future. Now she was going to have to spend the whole day with him, forced to watch him anticipate buyers and listen to his inane comments delivered so steadfast and sure. Oh, he always knew what was coming. Right. She pulled into the empty space next to his car and sat momentarily, gathering her strength for the coming day. She decided to let him do all the selling. She would just observe. That was her role. A nonsense, she thinks. You can't build a relationship just watching. Participation is required. She got out of her rental car and carried her stuff towards the flea market. Marie, what took you so long? He asked, smiling, pleasurably, savouring this small victory. She didn't reply, and perhaps in retaliation, he didn't offer to help her with the box she was carrying. He had already set up his side of the table, arranging his wares so they shared the space equally. He had used his collection of toy cars to mark the division, putting them bumper to bumper, perfectly straight, each with a little price tag on the roof. As she started to empty her box, deliberately scattering the table without order or style, she saw the accumulated knickknacks of their life together. This is what six years had amounted to, a table at the local flea market to be picked over and judged by all their friends and neighbours. It was embarrassing, yet every item seemed to spark a kind of warm ache inside her. The miniature gateway arch from St Louis, the bottle of Lambrusco they had never opened, all the packets of matches she had gathered from hotels, restaurants and cafes. She picked up a few, opening the flaps and reading small notes she had written, often just one word. Each, work, each word sparked a memory, like this one, Black Swan Hotel, Perth, Late Moon. They had walked along the river at night on the south side. A power blackout had the city in darkness, but the moon was full and it shimmered on the water, a spotlight illuminating their small, intimate theatre. And in that pristine moment, before they had even kissed, he had said, we better head back before they lock us out of the hotel. Always planning ahead. How much for the matches, someone asked. She wants to give a price, but realises she doesn't care. Ask him. Thank you.